uh, an enterprise company uh, based in Helsinki, as I say. Um, our headsets uh, run in what we call human eye resolution. So that means full photorealistic quality at natural distances. So it means you can read text, you can see every detail, you can see everything as you would see it in, in uh, real life. Uh, at the natural distance you would normally see it. So there's no need to squint a bit, no need to lean in a bit. It enables you obviously to have that full visual fidelity um, at the same level as you'd have if you had 20-20 vision. Um, so that's around three to four times the level of a typical commercial uh, VR or, or mixed reality headset. Um, all our headsets feature eye tracking technology. It runs at uh, 200 hertz. Um, we go on another day, we go into more detail as to how it works, but it makes it super easy to get that gaze tracking data um, out of your session to integrate it with other biometric um, solutions such as eye motions, for example, to, to take it to the next level. Uh, we're the world's only company who create true video pass through mixed reality in human eye resolution. And uh, as I know, you've seen some excellent presentations from the likes of uh, Shafi um, earlier. I'll also explain what the difference is between Vario and something like HoloLens in a second. And we also feature integrated hand tracking technology. So that allows you to um, interact with virtual objects in the real world using your real hands. And uh, we, can, we can show you a little bit about that in a minute. But firstly, what is true video pass through mixed reality? So this example, please forgive me for it being a car, um, but this basically is a Volvo SUV. It's a Unity model, so it's created in the Unity software platform. On the left, you can see the same model through Microsoft HoloLens. As you can see, you've got quite a limited field of view. It's actually about what we call 40 degrees in terms of the field of view, and the light can pass through the object. It's a holographic approach. It overlays information on the scene. With Vario Mixed Reality, we fuse the real and the virtual worlds together. So you've got realistic lighting, reflections. The virtual object is entirely solid, so it looks um, as realistic and as immersive as possible. Now, this video I'm playing now, hopefully the internet gods are being kind and you're seeing at least a few frames, shows the new Vario XR3 in action. Um, this is just the lobby of our office in, in Helsinki. You can see obviously that robot out there in the foreground is, um, or in the background is entirely virtual, but as you can see, it's totally solid. Um, totally kind of realistic as it brings out this uh, this human body. You can see the reflections being generated in real time in the real world. Um, but you can see you've got perfect occlusion between the virtual content and the real content. Ultra high resolution, as I say, you know, up to four times the level of a typical um, off the shelf headset. And this we're seeing here, forgive me for it being a little bit gory, gory it's not designed for medical experts, but um, this actually shows the hand tracking technology in action. So again, rather than using controllers or things, if some of you have used Steam controllers or Oculus controllers before, this actually uses technology of a company called Ultraleap in Bristol. It's integrated into the headset, so you can naturally, just using your real hands, interact with virtual content and manipulate virtual content, select options, so on and so forth. So as you can see, it, it's perfectly in real time, fusing that real and virtual content together. You can see other people in the room, you could interact with the other people in the room, so on and, uh, and so forth. So what are the benefits of Vario? Well, because we've got this truly immersive technology that fuses the real and the virtual content, you get much deeper emotional engagement. You can see displays, you can see your medical instruments, you can see your real hands in human eye resolution as you interact um, with the training, with the simulation, um, and with whatever exercise you're trying to do. You can create any medical training scenario instantly and easily. You can stay in the same room with the same team. I'm going to show you another video in a minute with two people within the same um, simulation. It allows you to quickly switch from one scenario to the other to interact um, together to communicate naturally together. Even with, though we've got this video uh, pass-through system, the latency is less than 20 milliseconds. So it means in plain English, I could throw you a tennis ball when you're wearing the headset and you'd catch it. So it gives you that level of immersion that just isn't possible with any other headset. This gives you another example. This is using our, our chroma key technology. So some of you will have seen chroma screens before, just like the movies, right? Whenever the headset sees uh, the green screen, it's able to replace that with the virtual content. Here, we're just doing a simple case. We've got a couple of the guys from the office. We've got a simple um, mannequin, uh, but hopefully this short video will show you just how some of this can come to life for you in mixed reality. This is now the headset view. 
So wearing the headset, obviously you can see the mannequin entirely naturally. You can see your partner entirely naturally. You can interact in ultra high resolution with all the controls um, and all the uh, all the systems you'd be needing to use. So, you know, very natural, very easy to use and much, much more immersive than uh, than either doing something in virtual reality or, or other kind of mixed reality technologies. So obviously one eye on the clock, but you know, three key use cases, I think where you might want to look into more um, detail at Vario. Number one, of course, surgical simulation, anything that is gonna need ultra high resolution, anything where you need to get into the finest details, maybe um, you're getting into, you know, the finer parts of the body that it's not good enough to be just good enough. You need that level of detail. Uh, 3D visualization of medical images, whether this be in neurosurgery, maybe this would be in dentistry, um, but anywhere again where you can utilize that that graphical and that uh, that visual quality and of course as you see with mixed reality it's easy to work together as a team to interact together in that um, virtual context so um, anything where you're doing medical team training medical simulation um, there's a great use case uh, for uh, for various technology so I'll end you with just uh, one more quote um, which is from uh, another one of our partners, a company called Arama VR, again doing surgical training. Uh, the resolution, precision and clarity are absolutely pushing the boundaries of hyper-realistic VR experiences. And it's a key component for the medical training market to embrace. So I'd encourage you to um, take another look at Viro if you've never heard of us, uh, never heard of us before, as I said, a uh, Helsinki-based company. Um, you can find the link here, vario.com. Um, we have a specific um, vertical, we call it entirely focused on uh, medical and, uh, and academic um, usage of the headsets. Feel free to drop me an email. I appreciate super tight timing here just to uh, um, to share a little bit, a little taster about Vario. Feel free to drop me an email at neil.broadly at vario.com. And we're across all of the socials, which I know Pete loves the socials. So we're across all of the socials. So um, please check us out. I'm obviously on LinkedIn as well. Um, and uh, we can connect you and we can have a much more in detail and, uh, and hopefully productive discussion. So um, hopefully that helps. I'll hand back to Pete. That is very kind of you. That is that you know a great presentation. And and, and again, I get excited when I see stuff like this, and I, and I can sense the, the the passion with you as well. And and I hope you create some connections outside this meeting after this. So thank you for that. We'll keep to time. We'll keep tight. Um, I'm going to hand over to Phil Moore actually. Insight next. I don't know if you're ready yet, James, but I'm going to go to Phil Moore next because he was next in line. And, and Phil, brilliant person. I was linking with him on on the kind of design of this workshop and the thought about it. So without further ado, let me hand over to Phil Moore, please. Yeah, yeah, thanks for that, Pete. Good afternoon, everybody. So, yeah, let me just uh, see if I can share my screen. Um, just want to take you a few, um, just just through a few um, slides, just telling what we're about uh, in and what we're doing in immersive technology and, and a request uh, for, for some help. Um, so I'm, I'm on the lookout for innovative software uh, application and service providers and, and also hardware um, providers as, as well. So thanks for that, Neil. And we actually had a chat with Mika yesterday in Helsinki, and I think we, we're going to hook up and uh, I think I'm due to have a conversation with you. Yeah, so I'm looking for it. It's a small world, Phil. <laughs> yeah, it's a small world, but you wouldn't want to hoover it, would you? Um, <laughs> So, so I'm, I'm looking for things that are in the mixed reality, immersive, tech-based, that, that broad area, and particular things that are, that are health and, and care focused. Um, so a little bit about where we're coming from. So inside at a glance, you know, basically we're a reseller, who knows where we, we've come from, of products and services, um, but we're also a service provider as well. We provide implementation services, support, manage services, et cetera. And we do, we've done a lot of things with Microsoft, particularly in the din, digital innovation um, space. Um, and we're the largest reseller of HoloLens, for instance, and we've done loads of deployments in the NHS. And we've also got a, an emerging partnership with, with Facebook um, for the you know, Oculus uh, for, for business and so hoping to get other headsets in there as well. And so our, our business it goes into these areas of you know, what we call supply chain optimization, which is where we started from of hardware and licenses and things like that. But then moving into things like connected workforce. Um, so using doing teams deployments, for instance, cloud and data center, and then what we call digital innovation. As a digital innovation for us is that spectrum of things there. And in the, in the middle, you know, there's mixed reality, which is probably you know, the fastest growing thing that we've got in the UK uh, at the moment. 
been particularly driven by uh, you know the, the COVID uh, situation, uh, people wanting to to do things remotely, uh, whether that's operational sort of clinical services or on the the student education side, as Andrew was talking to uh, about from Leeds, and you know when we work with with Leeds for, for instance. And so you know, a broad range of, of projects that we're seeing in healthcare, basic from, you know, from the experiential side, so using sort of VR sort of things for, for things like pain management, patient wellness, those sort of things. The expert support, which is using technologies like Microsoft Remote Assist and HoloLens. The product and place side, so doing digital twins and things like that through to training and working with third party application vendors like GigXR and these sort of guys and Apocla. Uh, and then through to the insights side of things of bringing in the, the uh, some of the uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning side of things. But loads of, of, of stuff going on in the NHS recently. So, you know, we're working with Health Education England, say so with, with Leeds on, as an example on the acute side, just starting with Birmingham on the commute, uh, community services side, um, South London and Morsley on the mental health side of things, University of Cambridge, the med school there for student training, uh, Torbay Council for uh, work in uh, domiciliary and residential care with community nurses, etc., cetera, and um, a lot of stuff with, with Alderhay on the children's hospital side. So I want to just get there across the point, you know, we're seeing this technology being really adopted across all sorts of different health and care settings. And that brings me on to this, this point, my, my plea for uh, connecting with, with people. I'm putting together um, sort of an immersive tech catalogue stroke marketplace, which brings together different types of hardware devices, all sorts of applications um, whether you know, that be for student education things on anatomy and physiology or you know, examples like pain management or dementia care or wound management, whatever they may be, uh, as well as bespoke development services. And the idea is then to take all, all of those different things, have them published and make them available through our public sector procurement uh, frameworks. Um, particularly one called Health Trust Europe, which enables people to buy really easily um, just with direct award because uh, we go through all of the pre-checking um, uh, pre of vendors on there. And it's a great vehicle, particularly for SMEs, to, to get access to the end market because it's all public sector compliant, complies with all, all the rules, but it's a, we think it, it, it's a great vehicle for that people to have showcase what they can do. We can wrap around services um, to that, provide hardware devices and things like that, and provide a complete package and make it easier for you know for customers to to procure. So I want to. I know we're, we're tight on time, Pete. So I'll, I'll leave it uh, with that. But so that's the kind of the uh, the gist of of what we're trying to do. Because you know, immersive tech, fantastic place to work. And Pete, you're doing a fantastic job with all of this. Thanks. Thank you. That very kind words. And and again, you know, just to, to reiterate my thanks to you, Phil, because we have spoken a couple of times and, you know, things like creating a catalogue, a marketplace, helping people navigate the procurement. It's all it's all the barriers that can prevent this this, yeah. this spread and adoption. And, and I, I, I'm really keen to, to, to see how things like this progress, because um, as a few speakers have mentioned, you know, the text there, the future's there. But unfortunately, the spread and adoption is not always there for a, a range of reasons. But no, brilliant presentation again, and uh, I hope others, others found it useful. And um, we are we are still good for time, so so we don't need to panic too much. But uh, again, I'm going to go in order of 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 where they are, and and, and we'll come back to to James in a minute if that's all right, James. Um, you know, uh, but we'll go to Richard Adam next at Immersive Reality, and uh, Richard again is an, is another. Um, organization in the Yorkshire patch which I was really keen to try and find I mean I wasn't you know I wasn't precious I was trying to just find good quality things but actually it turned out that a lot of the speakers that I'd stumbled across were Yorkshire based so without further ado let me hand over to Richard Adam at Immersive Reality please. Hello everyone um, can you Oh, I can actually just see Pete at the moment. Is uh, could everyone see me? Or? I can see you as a thumbnail, but I think it's. I think there's a slightly delay, and it should come through. Try sharing your screen. You've just switched your camera around the other way. Actually, I can now see. Um, so let me. Uh, I wonder. 
Uh, so I, I can I can see you, Richard. Your camera's just gone off again. Um, do you want to try sharing your screen? Because I know me and you spoke last week, didn't we, about your presentation? Do you want to share and see if that that works? That's better. Perfect. Excellent. So you, what you've got is uh, something that's a little bit different. So what uh, immersive reality do is um, we were a, a startup. We started at the beginning of the pandemic, which is, I would never advocate to anybody given uh, the last year. Um, and our background is in uh, special needs. So um, we come from uh, sensory products. So these would be things like bubble tubes and bull pools and things like that that you'd use in uh, special needs or dementia care. Um, and we took uh, our experience there and we started with VR uh, headsets. And what we found very quickly was that they're not always appropriate for all our users. So we spun it completely the other way around and we came to create these immersive spaces, such as you see in this image here. So what we've got there is a bunch of projectors and audio and lasers that uh, create uh, a virtual reality uh, format, but uh, it's a shared immersive space. That, that image there is about four and a half meters square. It's a physical room. So that's what we do. And into it, we put a platform that uh, has images and video and CGI environments. So we, we create CGI uh, gamification type experiences uh, that we share with uh, primarily with kids at this point. So typical example here uh, is autism. Um, so using these American statistics, as many as one in 68 people are on the autistic spectrum. And we have content that creates an, uh, a calm environment, but also helps with simulation uh, of how to deal with a, a neuro, neurotypical world. Um, and because it's a shared space, it allows for more empathy and uh, physical and social interaction. So in this image here, we have, uh, this is a, a school in the Midlands and it's an autistic school and we've got a very calming scene. So people tend to associate autism with potentially uh, children having um, meltdowns. Uh, and what we aim to do is have uh, calm them down in these rooms. And that calming atmosphere also has uh, benefits for uh, areas such as dementia, but it's not currently where we operate. And we also create CGI environments. So here's an example here uh, where we are using, we've created a free roam environment. It's, uh, uh, it's created in a, a common gaming platform and into it we put animals or plants and, uh, and users can interact with them. And you'll notice there that that's actually pointing at a corner of the room and it's fully integrated onto the floor as well. So when we have things like video, we can take uh, pupils and, and children and, and people who have got limited mobility and we can take them paragliding, for example, or we can take them on a zip wire um, or we can take them to the bottom of the ocean. And these are all experiences that help with mental welfare. Um, and obviously, when you put these sort of kids or people in, into a headset, uh, you're effectively locking them in. Uh, and that's why the shared immersive space for us is vitally important. Uh, inclusion is very much what drives us. So this, this scene that we have here is a CGI underwater environment and it's wrapped all the way around. And uh, we're operating lasers here to interact with the fish. So the reason why that child's got a, uh, his hands on the wall is because the fish are attracted to the hand. And that's been giving, that's giving um, some cause and effect action. Um, and that's a, a level of control that you can get. Uh, and it's, 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 it's quite impressive. We also use um, Xbox controllers, uh, particularly with children uh, of any type. It's a technology that uh, is readily and readily available and it's uh, intuitive. The other thing that we're developing in here and the prime reason why we've come to this forum is uh, we're also looking at gesture uh, using Azure capability. And that would allow us to track movement 
So we could put an image and uh, on one wall and ask somebody to touch it, and we can measure that whether they've actually done that or not. Um, and obviously on the opposing wall. So that has uh, applications in physical recovery and rehabilitation. So when Andrew Lewington said about engaging with immersive um, or with medics, that's partly why we're here today, so that we can start engaging and seeing how we can develop this uh, technology in conjunction with others. So, and the final thing that we do, uh, and this is actually my LinkedIn image as well, is simulations. So in a neurotypical world, we will be quite happily going through a London underground, but if you've got sensory overload, um, it's uh, not really appropriate. So we, we create tools to help, um, and this is a multi, and it's a multi-person environment. So, uh, um, headsets wouldn't really work in this environment. So my details are there. Um, I am looking to start uh, talking with um, other other companies uh, who uh, might might uh, want to work with us on this and uh, develop a, a medical application rather than an education one where we are at the moment. So that's that's me done. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you, Richard. And again, thank you for your time. Thank you for giving this a different angle. And um, when I set up this event, I was really keen to try and show not only the different tech, the different applications, but actually the different audiences, because that was really important to me. And in health, we do talk about health inequalities and digital exclusion quite a lot. I genuinely see a technology here that can um, allow access to, to client groups, to, to, to patient groups that are maybe not always um don't always have equal access let's say to to experience um or, or care so I, I think what you're doing is fantastic and and uh, and i hope people do connect with you um so our final presentation today is 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 eon media as part of this session anyway so we, we do go obviously back into the main rooms i hope you will join us back in that main room as well because we've got some other great speakers um, um as well but uh, again, just to introduce James Cherry from Eon Media. Again, a company very close to my heart because they're whole based, and that's my sort of stomping ground. And 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 and, and we've worked out of C4DI, the Centre for Digital um, Innovation in Hull, which is like an umbrella company for a range of tech companies. And I know Eon certainly had a, 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 um, a foothold in that in that organisation for a long while. And I think you still are, James, aren't you? I think you're still part of C4DI community. Yeah, very much. Yeah, so yeah, thank still. you for your help, James, and 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 I can't wait to 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 hear from from you and what you're involved in. Thanks, Pete. If I can hopefully get it to work this time. Sorry about the technical issues. Um, I'm going to try sharing my screen in the traditional way, which as per the suggestions, and I've got a backup option of just sharing the video for you all to watch in your own time. So fingers crossed, this sharing the screen is going to work. Uh, right? Can you see my screen? We can. It's just the audio, so let me know. Are you getting audio? We're not getting audio uh, for some reason. And when you click share screen, was that little option in the share screen tray to include audio as part of the presentation? Did you have that option? Uh, might... I don't think so. I think it's, I've just had a quick Google. It looks like because I'm on Mac. Um, Is it? So I mean I know I know when you when you share your screen in Teams you can share desktop a particular screen a particular application and right above them is a really small toggle button that you just have to click that's what I get on a on a non Mac. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean failing failing that if the sound doesn't work I mean I don't know if you want to stop sharing your screen restart sharing them just see if that button's there if the sound isn't there I mean hopefully you can just talk us through some of your your slides as well maybe as you go along I don't know and like you say as a bit of a backup we can we can watch it yes. but I think it'd be good to to bring to life just who we on media are. oh forgive me I've lost my share screen button there we go right I'll just try again. I'll just double check for that option and see yeah. if it's there. I don't think it is. Uh, no, I don't have it. Um, Do you want to? Can you email me your presentation? Actually, just out of interest. And I've I'll... just put. I've just put a link okay. to the video in okay. in the chat. Well, I'll tell you what. Give me, me everybody. Don't worry. Let me just see if I can open it and share my screen now. Then. Oh, sorry, we couldn't find that page. It's saying. Um. Blah, 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 blah. So that link. Um. Is it working? But that that could be an option, actually, James. If you just uh, try try 
sharing your presentation again. It's not it's not like that Vimeo link. Um, and at least I don't think it has. Um, yes, I think that I think the link that I've just clicked on is not bringing anything through. Yeah, I've just checked that again. Just try it one more time for me. I think it was private. I've just set it to public. Um, yeah. Uh, bear with me a second. Because now this thing's popping up. Uh, no, it's saying we can't, can't find that page. Um, Sorry, how... one, more time for, one, one more time for me. There was another setting I've just changed. That might be public again now. Yeah, do you want me to press it now? We're we ready for the link. Yeah, just refresh. Yeah. yeah An error, okay. Please try again soon. Let me refresh. No, it's not coming through. Oh. Uh, hey, we go. We've got it. We've got it. There I've we go. got it. Thank God. Yes, got it. So, bear with me. Let me just see. Can I hear audio? I can hear audio. So, two seconds. Thanks, no worries. Um, as I said, there's always little glitches. So, I can include that. I can do that. All right. So, Tell me, you can see my screen then, can't you? Yeah. And I'm just making it full screen. And then I am going to press play. Hi everyone, I'm James. I'm head of Eon Visual Media. We're a creative, innovative digital media agency, and we're augmenting the world, and specifically the healthcare sector, with creative, inspiring digital content. We offer six core service areas. Those are design, animation, and that's 2D and 3D animation, video production, app development, web development and digital marketing. And there's actually an array of services that fall out of those service areas. And we're also really passionate about anything innovative and any new tech, hence why we've been exploring augmented reality and virtual reality a lot over the last few years. This is a short show reel, just to give you a bit more of a flavor of some of the work that we do and some of the projects that we get involved with. Some of the examples and the use cases that you'll see include remote product demonstrations and product mode of actions, showcasing how a product gets to work inside the body. We've got healthcare professional and pharmacy educational training content. Lab and equipment training. virtual and visual healthcare assistants, showcases specifically some of the mixed reality projects that we've been working on recently. Brand engagement and patient education examples including some interactive packaging. Approximately 80% of the work that we do is within the healthcare sector and some public sector projects, as well as working with some large international corporations like the ones on screen now. Despite how far the technology has come in recent years, there are of course still some accessibility challenges to hardware and to fitting the technology into people's everyday lives. With that said, I believe one of the biggest barriers to some of the use cases that we've discussed today is our human nature to be creatures of habit. Mm. Our incumbent mindsets and lack of innovation within healthcare institutions is one of the main reasons why some of these things take longer than they should. For me, one of the most exciting things about this technology is this timeline of significant milestones over recent years.
I think it really highlights the rapid pace of change, the big players and the huge investments involved. A few recent additions to the timeline that I'm particularly excited about monitoring over the next months and years are 5G, LiDAR and Apple Glass. I believe that these three technologies have the power and the potential to really break down any of the existing, all of the existing barriers to consumer and patient facing augmented reality and virtual reality experiences. Ultimately though, the single most exciting thing for myself and the team here at E.ON is inspiring people to be more engaged with their own health through digital technology and digital content. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and found it useful. If anybody does have anything at all that they'd like to ask or discuss, we're a friendly team. You can get in touch with us via any of the methods on screen now. We'll also be joining the spatial virtual space that's set up for this afternoon. So if anybody else is there, please do drop by and say hello. And that's it from me. Um, thank you, everybody, for your time. And I'll hope to catch up with you soon. Cheers. Bye. Brilliant. Brilliant. Let me just stop sharing my screen. And uh, there we go. We got there in the end. And actually, it was well worth the wait. So thank you for doing that, James. And and as I said, I was I was keen to get you part of this um the, the, this event because we you know we had some early conversations. I knew you were working with some big global players, and you know you put some of the logos on the screen there. And um, and and I think you know you you've got a lot to offer the system, the creative industries, because one of the things that we talk about in health as well is how we learn from other industries. So whilst you you showcased a little bit of health there. I know that you're working with some some big global players on, on on across other industries, and obviously it's not for me to say who your clients are, but you might want to give a flavour of that yourself if you want to. But but actually learning from how other businesses are doing this really intrigues me. So so thank you for your time, thank you for your presentation and putting the effort in to do that. Um, no, thank you, Pete, and thanks everybody for bearing with me through those technical issues. Not a, not a problem. I mean, as I said, we were lucky. We had a bit of flex in 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 the sort of agenda. Now, we're due to go back um, at twenty two four for Catherine Allen's um, presentation. I would encourage you to listen to that because Catherine came from the BBC. She, I think she's going to talk about some barriers. So I think you know, I know you know, if people want to stay on this link for a little bit lo longer, it it will end. But I, I am going to leave now just because I want to go for a comfort break myself. Just you know, get a drink and things. Um, but before I do that, thank you for everyone, um, you know, to, to Neil uh, Varia, to Phil at Insight, to Richard at Immersive and, and, and James at Eon. Thank you. And I hope those that have joined in uh, this theme have, have, have learned something and, and please do link with each other outside this meeting. So thanks for your time and uh, yeah, go and get your comfort break and, and please do join us uh, back in the main lobby. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Pete.